All right, so we're jumping back into our series, the Sermon on the Mount series. And uh, so we are jumping in chapter six. So it's a it's a three chapter long sermon that God or Jesus gave on the Sermon of the Mount. And so last uh, to get you kind of caught up to where we are, to where we are right now. Jesus is sitting on this mount. He's talking to his disciples. You know, he's already gone through some things that he was teaching. Uh, he, he taught the Beatitudes. Blessed are those who are poor in spirit. He, he spoke on that. He talked about how we should go and be the salt and light into the world. He talked about how Christ didn't come to overthrow the law. He came to fulfill the law. He talked about how we need to control our anger. Uh, how we need to uh, not to have a short fuse, but have a long fuse. He talked about how he talked about adultery and that uh, listen, committing adultery in your heart is just as bad as having or uh, committing adultery. He talked about divorce. Uh, he talked about um, the uh, the rules and, the, and, the, and his thoughts on divorce. He talked about how it's important it's important for us to keep our word and to always tell the truth. Like I promised Jacob. I will, I will uh, keep my word and I will FaceTime you. Uh, and so it's important to keep your word. Talked about how when someone comes at you and, and slaps you on the cheek, you're supposed to turn the other cheek, uh, go the extra mile. And finally, he talked about how it's important for us to love our enemies, right? How we're to love those that we can only hang out with for four minutes, not five minutes, and, and all that good stuff. And so here we are. We are now, I got you all caught up. You're welcome. Uh, got you all cut up, and so now we're in Matthew chapter six, looking at verses one through four, and this is uh, um, this is where we are. So if you got it, say amen. amen. Let's stand as we read God's word together, starting in verse one. It says this: Be careful. Say, be careful. Be careful. It says, be careful not to practice your righteousness in front of others. To be seen by them. Otherwise you have no reward with your father in heaven. So whenever you give to the poor. Don't sound a trumpet before you. As the hypocrites do in the synagogues. And on the streets to be applauded by people. Truly I tell you. They have their reward. But when you give to the poor. Don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. So that your giving may be in secret. And your father who sees in secret will reward you. My sermon title today is called Quietly Making Noise. Say quietly making noise. I know it's a deep title, isn't it? <laughs> Heavenly Father, you are good. You are merciful. You are great. You're the great healer. You're so powerful. And we just thank you, God, for who you are in us. And I pray, God, that in these next moments, Lord, that you would speak deeply into us. Father, that you would encourage us, that you would uh, open up our hearts, Lord, and remove all distractions from us. <clears throat> Father, we pray, God, that you open up our hearts and our eyes and our ears. Father, we want to see your word and hear your word and feel your word. We want to be guided by you. And so, Lord, let your word penetrate our hearts. And we just pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a seat. Have a seat. <clears throat> Quietly making noise. We live in a selfie, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, tweeting world, don't we? We, we, we constantly put these things up uh, on, our, on our posts. Like, we want to catch up and see what everyone is doing or maybe should not be doing. Right? Whatever you post... On social media, people are going to see it. People are going to hear what you put on videos and this and that and the other. It's just the world that we live in now. We live in a social media uh, world, don't we? And Jesus here talks about what are your motives? What are your motives when you are putting these things up on Facebook? What are your motives when you do good things in front of people? Are we doing it to receive Praise from those who see you? Are we doing it to build up our own ego? Do we only do it when we know someone is watching, when I mean do it? Are we only doing the right thing 
and a good thing so people can see us and, and know that they're watching us. So are we only doing it at that time? Jesus breaks that down for us, for us social media world living people. Jesus breaks that down for us. And he says this, so I'm going to break down the verses that we just have right now. And so he says this in Matthew 6, verse 1. He says this. He says, be careful. Say, be careful. Be careful. He says, be careful not to practice your righteousness in front of others to be seen. I want to say that again. I want that to sink in for a minute. He says, be careful not to practice your righteousness in front of others to be seen by them. Otherwise, you have no reward with your Father in heaven. So the word righteousness means this. It means goodness. It means worthiness. It means high-mindedness. Be careful not to practice your goodness in front of others to be seen by them. Be, be careful not to practice your worthiness in front of others to be seen by them. Be careful not to practice your high-mindedness in front of others to be seen by them. Right? When we do that, when we when we practice our righteousness in front of people, we, we like to hear that. We're like someone would say, hey, you're doing a good job. Or you're one amazing person. You're like, I know. <laughs> Calm down. I know it. I am a man. Thank you. All right. Thank you. What Jesus is saying here is that we should be drawing attention so others see that we are doing good things. Right? Jesus says that there is no reward in that when it comes to the Father in heaven. I wrote down in my notes in my Bible, I said this, I said, don't draw attention to yourself, then it becomes about you and not about Jesus. So Jesus goes on in verse 2, he says, so whenever you give to the poor, he says, don't sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets to be applauded by people. Truly, I tell you, they have their reward. Don't sound a trumpet before you. What does that look like? Well, here, I'll tell you. Here, it looks like. When we are on, uh, when you're on Facebook or Snapchat, or, you know, teenagers are really good at this, right? So when they're, when they're taking a bite of something of their food, they're like, You know what I'm saying? Tell me you don't see it. Why do they do those crazy poses? <laughs> Come on, tell me you don't see poses like that on Facebook, right? Because they're drawing attention to them. Or sometimes you see them like, uh, they're walking down the street and they're like, hey, uh, talking to a homeless person. Here, I just want to give you some food real quick. Drawing attention to themselves or, or, or just giving some money to a person on the street like, here you go, or they're videotaping. Hi, we're live here and I'm uh, down on Lincoln Way. And so this guy here just asked me for 20 bucks. I'm giving him five. <laughs> How ridiculous would it be if all of a sudden you were, Jeff, Jeff and I, we go downtown and we, we start uh, doing street evangelism and passing out tracts and stuff. What would it look like if all of a sudden uh, Jeff is passing out a track and I'm passing out a track and I'm like, hey man, do you know Jesus? Because he certainly knows you. And so, um, you know, he loves you. And he loves me. It's ridiculous, isn't it? Isn't it ridiculous? And some of you are like, that's me. That's me, right? Hey, look at this new taco that I just made, right? Taking pictures of it. And when we do that, when we when we take those selfies, now listen, I'm not telling you, don't, make, don't take selfies of yourself, right? Because I'm just not telling you not to do that, right? But here's the thing, what happens is, is that we run to our, our devices, or we run to those things, and we want to check out how many likes that post got, right? We, we, we want to read all the praise comments, 
uh, of how amazing we are. We want to check out how many people have shared our, our posts or shared our Instagram posts or whatever. And, and we feel good about it, right? We feel good about it. Man, I was giving money to the homeless and I got five likes. Woo! I was, I was giving money to the homeless and 17 people saw that video, right? And, and so now that I put it on social media, everybody knows I'm a good person. Everybody's praising me. Oh my gosh, look how amazing you are. You're so, you're so good. But listen, Jesus talks about this in, in Matthew 23. He actually talks about teachers of the law and he talks about Pharisees who were doing the same exact thing that I was just telling you about. This was back in biblical times. Check this out. It says this. It says, Then Jesus said to the crowds and to his disciples, The teachers of religious law and the Pharisees are the uh, official interpreters of the law of Moses. Listen to what Jesus says here. So practice and obey whatever they tell you, but don't follow their example. He says, For they don't practice what they teach. They crush people with unbearable religious demands and never lift a finger to ease the burden. Everything they do is for show. On their arms, they wear extra wide prayer boxes with scripture verses inside. And, and they wear robes with extra long tassels. And, and they love to sit at the head of the table at banquets and, and in the seat of honor in synagogue. They love to receive respectful greetings as they walk in the marketplaces and to be called rabbi. Jesus is saying that these teachers of the laws and, and these Pharisees here, they're teaching the, the people how to be humble and, and not to draw attention to yourself by following the commandments, the Ten Commandments. And, and they're saying, hey, listen, don't go out and tell everyone how you are keeping the law of Moses. They're saying, let your actions speak for you even when you, no one is watching you. He, they said, you are quietly making noise. But here's the flip side. These Pharisees, these teachers of the law, who are saying, don't do, don't draw attention, don't speak about the things you do. Here they are, they do exactly the opposite of what they're doing. And, and Jesus said, do what they teach, but not follow their example. You know what? They were so busy. They were so busy acting, being actors. They're so busy in saying, hey, Look how holy I am. Right? They were so they were so busy that even the clothes that they wore were extravagant. Extravagant clothes. Hi, we're live here on the red carpet, and here comes a teacher of the law, and uh, and teachers of the Pharisees. Hey, teacher of the law, tell us what you're wearing today. Well, today I'm wearing the fine Gucci camel hair uh, with with the, the nice leather tassels. Today, designed by my wife and, and, and Gucci and Versace and, um, and and Ferrari and Lamborghini and, and I just and, and all the E's out there. They were drawing attention to what they were wearing. In fact, they had these prayer boxes on their arms. And what happens is it's like a prayer box. It's, like, it's, a, it's, a, it's a big box, right? And they made it extremely long. And inside would be verses in there. And the longer the box, the more holier you would be, right? So you know how like kids decorate for Valentine's Day in the Nike box, right? So that's what they do. They just, they just, they'd be all decorated. They'd be walking around in their Versace, Gucci, whatever. And they got the big long box with scriptures on there. And they're just like, hey, hey, hey. check how holy I am. See how good I am, right? They would actually go into to, uh, banquets and they would sit at the head of the table without being invited. They would go to synagogues and sit in the chair of, uh, of honor, right? Without being invited because they are those people. They are the ones who want to draw attention to them. They would walk down the streets and, and they would be like they were in a parade. Good to see you, peasants. I mean, people. Good to see you, right? And people would shout out praises. Man, you look good. Man, you're so holy. Man, you're so great. Yeah, we know. We know. And Jesus is saying, right, what we see here in Matthew 23, he's saying, hey, do what they're teaching you, okay? But don't follow their example. Do what they're teaching you, 
But don't, don't follow what they're telling you, or don't follow what they're doing. I'm sorry to say that there are so many uh, religious leaders now in this world who are exactly like that. Who are exactly like, you need to be humble, and you need to love your neighbor as yourself, and you need to blah, 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 and then next thing you know, they go out into the world and they're doing whatever it is that they can do or want to do. As long as nobody sees them, it doesn't matter. I know that some of you are saying that's not true. It is true. If I look at the word hypocrite, because Jesus calls these folks hypocrite, a, a great definition of hypocrite are, is called play actors. Play actors. So here's what's happening. A hypocrite, right? These teachers of the law, these Pharisees, right? So they give this, uh, they give an external appearance of spirituality. On the outside, they're holy. But on the inside, on the internal part, it doesn't match the uh, external part. And so if, like a hypocrite, you get the applause of people, well, listen, that's all the reward that you're going to get on this side of heaven. My question is this. Would I still do this if no one ever knew what I did? Would I still do good? Would I still do right, even though I know nobody's watching? Would I still do good? Would I still do right, even though I know I won't get praise for it? Will I still do good? Will I still do right, even though I don't get 185,000 likes? Would I still do that? Jesus says that we need to be quietly making noise. Say quietly making noise. Quietly making noise. Then he breaks it down in verse 3 and 4. He says this. But when you give to the poor, now listen, now he's got to know what to do. When you give to the poor, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. So that your giving may be in secret. And your father who sees in secret will reward you. Don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret. And your father who sees all, uh, who sees in secret will reward you. Give to those who need help because it's the right thing to do. Do you hear what I said, church? Give to those who need help because it's the right thing to do. James 1, 27 says this, real true religion from God the Father's perspective this is why how he sees it is about caring for the orphans and widows who suffer needlessly and resisting the evil influence of the world. Take care of those who need taken care of because it's the right thing to do. It doesn't listen. It doesn't always require money. It doesn't always require money. Why don't you just give up your time? Sometimes it, it takes some of your time. You know, spending some time with someone is so important. Did you know that nursing homes are filled with lonely people? A couple years ago, four or five years ago, Trudy and I were in Kentucky. I was doing a funeral there. And we went with the, the family members to this, uh, to this nursing home. As we were in this nursing home, uh, the family member that we were all visiting, I mean, we, we took a parade of people, <laughs> it seemed like it. And there was not enough room to be in this room uh, to meet with her. And so uh, some of the guys and I were just standing in the hallway. And as we were standing in the hallway, a flock, a herd, a pride of old women started coming our way. <laughs> right? And they were coming our way, and they're just like, ah! Because we're all sitting up to like this. <laughs> and so here's the thing. Uh, they were they just wanted conversation. Right? We were there to visit one person. The whole I mean, even the uh, folks that were there like, oh come on, Ethel, come on, whatever. We we got no 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 no, just keep it here. We're just talking and uh, just we want to get with them. Well, one of the ladies said, <clears throat> she goes, My my children put me in this God for second place. Right? Like she was a sound mind, she's looking physically fit, like she was, she was okay. She goes, they moved me out of my house. I only lived 10 miles away from them when I was in my house. They moved me here, now I'm an hour and a half away from them. And they don't ever come and see me. They never came and saw me when I was 10 miles away, now they moved me here because they think 
I can't uh, take care of myself. People just want your time. People just want to you to just speak out to them and, and love on them and be with them. But never when I was in Kentucky did I be like, hey, check out the flock of ladies I'm hanging out with. <laughs> Sharing Jesus, loving on them, but my around because they need some Jesus. We didn't even talk about Jesus. We just sat there and talked about life because people are just hungry to be recognized. 2005 and 2006, my daughter and I, we went to Belize, right? Uh, and I know that some of you, that's in Central America, and I know that some of you are like, oh, that's, a, that's a tropical place. It is very tropical. Um, and it's a tourist place. Oh yeah, I mean, they have, they have boats that stop and we go to Belize, but we went into the jungle. We went deep into the jungle. And there, our job was to go into the schools and we were putting on performances about Jesus and plays and stuff. And, after school, there was a, a hangout place in one of the villages. And there was a hangout place. And the teenagers and, and the kids would all come flock to this thing. When I'm talking teenagers. I'm talking like 15-year-olds, 16-year-old kids just hanging out. You know what they love to do? I'm talk Listen, teenagers, okay? Wrap your main brain around teenagers right now, okay? You know what these kids love to do? They love to put puzzles together. They love to jump rope. They were excited about it. They were, they were like, this is the most amazing puzzle I've ever put together. And all I'm thinking is, holy cow, back in the States, these teenagers in the States, they would be freaking out because they don't have a phone. They'd be freaking out because there's no video games. And they'd be freaking out because they can't check their social status. They'd be freaking out uh, just because they can't whatever. It's just... At this time, it was just people enjoying spending time with each other. And we, back in that time, your phones, they had no Wi-Fi. There was, my phone was dead. The, I, was, I was thousands of miles away from my family. And my phone didn't work for a whole week. I mean, the only way that I could uh, communicate with Tree was by email, by using the missionary's uh, computer. That was it. Listen, you don't have to tell anyone that you, what you're doing and why you're doing it. Just do it. And if nobody finds out you did it, that's okay. They didn't, uh, listen, you don't need to do it to get noticed. Taking care of the poor and taking care of those less fortunate or just doing good things, it doesn't matter who sees it. And that's what Jesus is trying to say. Don't do it because you want to get applause and, and praise and likes from somebody else. Just don't do it. At the other church, at, my, at the church I was pastoring before, I was always driving by Crow Creek. You guys know where Crow Creek is? You know where uh, the Eagle's Nest is? Um, down there off of Lincoln Way, and I, I forget what the other street is, but... Uh, Ames, right? Yeah. And so there was this creek that went by there. And so, and I just saw how junky it was. So I, I go back to the church and I'm telling my leaders, I was like, man, we need to invest in our community. And so I pass this creek all the time. We should clean it up. And everybody's like, yeah, let's do it. It's amazing. So we did. We, we uh, got a bunch of people together. We're pulling out grocery carts, uh, bicycles out of this creek, tires, trash, you name it. And you, there was a bridge that went, uh, the creek went under Lincoln Way. And so underneath there was where, way back under the bridges, is where some of the homeless folks would live. And we would just go there and we would clean up. You don't throw any of their stuff away because they use all their stuff. Like cans, lids, you name it. We did throw it, but we did clean it up a little bit. And what I noticed was, is that there was a lot of pocket Bibles, about this size, down by the creek. And it's like, they would just take the Bibles and like, we don't need it. And we would take all the Bibles and we put it in every single one of their places of sleep, right? And just like, oh no, you need this. This is what you need. And so we would clean up. Some of the folks would come after us. What are you doing with my stuff? I'm like, no, we're just cleaning it up. I don't need you to clean it up. Hey man, we're just trying to help out. You're not helping us out at all. Why don't you give me some money? Okay. Well, I'll tell you what, you read this Bible, you just throw it down at the creek and I'll give you some. 
You quote me some scripture, and I'll give you some money. That's all you want. You want us to just quote some scripture so you give us some money? That's all you want is money. What do I get out of it? Right? You're probably thinking, Jason, you're making that up. No, that's a conversation I had. I really did. And if I can force Jesus on him and make it happen, you will. No, Jesus! No, Jesus! You will just give me a big laugh! Jump off the top of me, this kid. I just went way off the toes. So here we are, we're cleaning up Crow Creek. We've been doing this for years. And, um, so the city wanted, the city of Cheyenne wanted to put a sign out saying, hey, this is being cleaned by such and such a church. And I said, no thanks. I don't want you to put, I don't want you to put any signs up, right? You see, we're not doing this to be recognized. We're not doing this at all. You see, we want Jesus to get all the glory. He asked us to improve our community, and that's what we're doing. Please don't put the sign up. And that's why now, present day, that's why you don't see me advertising what we do in our community. That's why you don't see me advertising what Living Water is doing in our community. You don't see me calling uh, Channel News 5, or you don't see me calling the paper saying, hey, look what Living Water is doing. You see, when we, when we do things in the community, we do it quietly by making noise. That's what we do. And, and so when we're in the community, People actually, the news people actually contact us. The paper people actually contact us. Let me tell you what's up. So, um, maybe some of you have seen us. Uh, last summer, we would be out on the uh, streets, like on, on Lincoln Way, or uh, not Lincoln Way, Del Range and Converse. And we'd actually be holding up signs like this as they're coming by, saying, you're not alone. And, you are valuable to Jesus loves you to to uh, this being you are loved or be joyful I mean we're just constantly holding up these signs like this and people are honking at you waving at you um, some of them will give you the bird whatever it is right but we're just holding up these signs and as we're holding up these signs uh, this guy pulls up and he says who are you with and we're like what do you mean who are you with and he says, well, what church or organization are you with? I said, we're with Living Water. And he goes, why are you doing this? And I said, because people need to know that Jesus thinks that they're valuable. That Jesus loves them. That they should be joyful. Right? And so they were taking our pictures, asking why we're doing this. And we're just saying, hey, man, it's all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. One of the things that, uh, that I love doing is that when we give gifts to people in the community that we have never met, like what th this young mother who's going to receive this bassinet, this baby bassinet, the one thing that sometimes I get to meet him, sometimes I don't. But one of the things I love to do is that uh, I'll say, hey, this is not a gift from living water. This is not a gift from life choice. This is a gift from Jesus. Because he sees you, he knows your situation, and he loves you. So thank him, not us. Point to Jesus as many times as you possibly can, right? Because we want people to know that Jesus sees them, uh, and, and he wants them to know that they're loved and important and valuable. We need to quietly make noise. Say, quietly make a noise. In Colossians 2, verse 23 says this. Work willingly at whatever you do, as though you were working for the Lord rather than for people. Remember that the Lord will give you an inheritance as your reward, and, and that the master you are serving is Christ. Everything that we do should always point to Jesus, amen? amen. Like, he, he should get all the glory. He should get all the likes. He should get all the heart emojis. He should, he should get all the shared posts. Listen, you and I, we're not looking for the pat on the back. What we're doing is quietly making noise. Quietly making noise. And Jesus says, and your father who sees in secret will reward you. Can I tell you something? The rewards from the father are more than any likes that you will get. The rewards from the Father 
or more than how many shares you have on your Facebook, or how many comments are left on your post. The reward is the inheritance, the inheritance of heaven. You will receive the inheritance of heaven, and nothing on this side of heaven comes close to that. Quietly making noise. Say quietly making noise. Quietly making noise. So when you do right, it doesn't matter who sees you. When you're doing right, you don't need to make sure that there's a crowd around you. When you're doing right, you don't need to make sure that everybody in the world gets to see it. When you're doing right, it's not about how you can pat yourself on the back. You see, it's when you're doing right, all the glory goes to Jesus. And how many times do we do right in our own home and there's nobody there? Whether it be hugging your child or comforting your wife or, or husband. Do you take a picture of that? <laughs> Trudy just got mad at me today, but I told her I loved her. <laughs> That's a daily thing. <laughs> What's your motive? Jesus is saying, what's your motive? When you give to the poor, what's your motive? Because if you're doing it to get a pat on your back, there's no reward in that. But if you do it secretly, if you do it privately, if you do it, it's just like you're breathing, you know what I mean? Me loving on people, me giving to, to folks, me just listening, me just praying, I don't need a crowd to, to say, well done. I'm just doing it because this is what I've been taught. It's how I've been raised. Not by my family, but by Jesus. He says, do it in honor of me. You got it, Lord. You got it, Lord. I wonder how many of us here right now are just saying, you know what? I love, I love the approval. I love, I love the attention. I love the pats on the back. I love the attaboys or attagirl. I mean, who doesn't? But when you're giving to, when you're, when you're serving the Lord, when you're giving to, to, to the poor, as Jesus is saying, don't be like the teachers of the laws and the Pharisees. Don't be on the outside saying you're spiritual, but on the inside you're dead. Because if you give in secret, like he said, there is a great reward in heaven, and that's the inheritance. We are, we are heirs to the throne. It's time for us to start living that way. Some of us, we need to start acting that way. So have